So this incredibly heated battle comes from a trial that some of you are watching during the day. It is over a piece of evidence found in the inmate's stomach who died after being restrained by corrections officers in Richland County, Ohio. It's over whether the evidence is admissible and in what way, shape, or form, and I have not seen a prosecution and a defense go at each other like this in quite some time, so I thought you all might enjoy it. So what we were talking up here, and I didn't want to have the discussion in front of the jurors, was uh, about uh, the question being asked of Dr. Lane was whether he knew that the item taken from Mr. Rios' stomach did not test positive for drugs. And that created a um, conversation about discovery and those kind of issues and whether there was a report or not a report. So that's where I wanted to do this outside the presence of the jury. So where we were, we can be freaking really be I think it would be appropriate. I think they've had an opportunity to communicate amongst themselves. Maybe they just have the answer at this point. Okay. So I'm referring to the report that was given to Mr. Mayor by, by Mr. Thompson. Uh, the Friday, June 12th, Bureau of BCI Forensic Scientist David Davidson completed the analysis, submitted evidence. In addition to digital photograph, Davidson indicated the following question material submitted as item number one is found to be polymer, that is 30 something minus 125 mils, thick, having convex shape. The exterior surface of the polymer has a very fine texture. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't read that quite so fast. So, the interior surface is smooth. Some of the edges of the polymer are jagged and appear to be torn, indicating that the piece was either a part of another item or a CAD material removed from it. Instru instru instrumental analysis and special library search revealed the composition of the polymer to be consistent with polyvinyl chloride PVC. So that's what we're referring to. Yes. That's okay. not only what he was referring to, but he also asked Dr. Lehman, isn't it true that the bag was tested and tested not negative for a presence of drugs. Well, that judge, my, my that question is, is maybe, maybe inarticulately stated <laughs> in that report that it did not test positive for any type of drug. Well, you know, well, you know, if it was in fact, was that was that analysis done on that day? Was that part of the analysis? Did it have I, anything on? Of course not. That was a trace. That's a trace. That's still not a Hold on, I'm asking him. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, I think then um, Leonard does. I I've think, spoken to him about okay. it. Well, I think that uh, the, the question then would be not related. So the objection would be sustained to that question. And then you can follow up with the fact that there may, there. well, I don't know if you can follow up with this one. Well, I think you it just follow up with someone else that there was no definitive well, test done. It's not the second time that this has been affirmatively stated by the state in this case. During opening statement, Mr. Thompson stood up. And in talking about that bag, he indicated that it was tested and it did not have drugs and it did not come back with the presence of drugs. Okay, so that's the second time the steward's had it. So I'm going to ask one time on the record, was that bag ever tested that came out of his stomach, that bag, was that tested in a BCI crime lab for the presence of drugs or any crime lab in the United States of America? Yes, yes or no? The test that was done, you have. Just I want to answer on that. Well, the, the, the answer, my answer would be this. There was clearly nothing to test on that, or, or because it's a BCI technician, and if they would have seen anything on that to test, they would have tested it. So that's my answer. No, that's he not clear. Trace, he's a trace guy. We spoke to him when they gave this two days before the trial, only because we found out about it. We called him, and he said we wouldn't do anything. We're not a drug lab. A drug lab's in a different part of the state. I'm a trace guy. I look at paint. I look at footprints. I don't do anything with drugs, period. That's a mischaracterization. Right. And when I spoke to Specialist Planner, he said the exact same thing and specifically told me that he did not have it tested for the presence of drugs, period. Well, that's it, sounds, it sounds to me like it was never tested by a, a, a drug. It would be someone like Tony Hembasco. Right. It would be looking. It was never, it was never tested for that. It, so, it was not, Judge. But even though it sat Tony Hembasco's offered for three months. Because there's nothing to test. That's my point. There, there's nothing on there. You can't test nothing. I mean, they, 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 they tested it. it. it was they don't tell them that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't tell them that. Yes, you did. He specifically said, isn't it true that that bag did not he test can answer for it? however he wanted to answer. Well, I don't, th I, I don't think you can And that goes to the other point. I don't think this guy knows any of that. Well, I get it. 
And I don't think it's appropriate to ask, that's not an appropriate question to ask if it was never tested. That do, you, do you know if for a fact it never tested positive for drugs? If it was never tested positive for drugs, you can't make that assertion in front of the jurors because you're giving them information that is misleading and well, you can't mislead the jury. Yeah, I understand. The test done. Not my intention, Judge, I apologize. Right. However, second I as, 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 the, as Mr. Mayor, Taking a shot, pointed it out. I didn't even bring it up. He brought it up, but he, the reason he brought it up is he's misleading the jury and wants them to think that it's a baggie of methamphetamine in the sleep. And that is it's not a reasonable hard. inference. It, as you've said, it's not been tested. So, how is that a reasonable inference? Sir, it's sir, absolutely sir, a sir, guess. Well, I'm going to set it's a guess. guess. Sir, I'm going to set it's a guess. Let's each side go back and forth. Now, I want to say this on the record there is no evidence that that's a bag. None. It has not been established in any testing anywhere. It was a fragment of a piece of plastic. And the evidence will be adduced that it's just as likely a piece of medical equipment that was used during the intubation okay. than it was a plastic bag. So there's so actually there's evidence right here about. on this autopsy report that says it is a torn, parentheses, ruptured, Plastic bag like object. They go back to the, go back to the comment. And I, don't, don't, I, don't, and I want to follow up on this. And this is the other piece of this. This lab that they gave us only because we found out about it three days before the trial specifically excluded it as a medical device that was provided by Leonard for comparison. It's excluded to the, they have five categor categorizations of confidence in their finding, and it's five excluded, meaning it is impossible that the medical item that he brought to them meet, met any of the same criteria. It is scientifically possible that what he brought after six months of looking for it that we never knew about as their smoking gun theory as to why this isn't a meth bag, their own scientist says it's excluded what they brought him. And so to say that it's just as likely, it's just a fairy tale. And I'm gonna tell you one more thing. He's not even subpoenaed by the state of Ohio. We only subpoenaed him because we don't know what to do about this information that isn't provided to us in a case that we have been ran down for nine months because we aren't ready for trial. How can you not be ready for trial when they're withholding evidence that they intend to stand in front of this jury and try to make a mockery of our argument? This is a trial by ambush. And I'm, the last thing about it is, is I think that, that the entire question about PVC material should be stricken the jury should be made to disregard it because that is an expert report that was provided days before the trial by the state. They can't make any reference to it. They can't call Davison. It's a non-starter in this case. If they wanted that in this case, they should have been in here begging for a continuance so that we would have the time to use it. We didn't ask for it because we didn't expect they're going to talk about it when it excludes it as their theory. I mean, what are we doing? Judge, I'll say again, I did bring up the baggie. He did. I, I didn't touch it with, with How can I not put up the bag here? And, and, and it was not time. excluded. Uh, he, he's misleading you. What I talked to Davison, and what, what he said was it didn't match the, the object that Leonard brought to him. Not that it was a medical device. It wasn't that medical device. He can he will say that. How many others? And he said to, to me over and over again, there. I have nothing to offer in this case. I have no idea what that was. I are have you, no idea. Are you offering any, are you intending to offer any testimony that you don't know what it is? Is that something that is being offered by a witness to say, are you offering a witness to get up there and say, I don't know if it's a plastic bag, I don't know what it is. I don't know no. What it is. Okay. no, we do not plan to do that. All right. So in that case, then I don't think we can argue facts not in evidence. So if it's, it, the problem with the state's argument is that the, Autopsy report says a plastic like bag rupture. So it's in evidence. It's in the autopsy report. So I, they can talk about it. Now, you guys can talk about it that we don't know what it is, but or it could be something else, but it's, it's in the autopsy report. How does it not? Then, then I would ask that the defense not refer to it as a, a baggie of methamphetamine. It's a plastic like bag. Okay. Well, and, 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 and words are important, Judge. I mean, I, he he's he he's just said he doesn't know what it is. No, just, that's what I just now now he and he also used the word when he talks about methamphetamine intoxication, and he admitted it. But I'm guessing he he said that I'm guessing. Well, he, he, he it's not. He, he, what he what he said was he he believes it was meth because he believes that he has a 
amphetamine in his system, and he's like, well, the most likely amphetamine would be methamphetamine. And then based on all his other findings, that's why he came up with his opinion of excited delirium, because he relates it. So, yeah, you're right. He says it. he's guessing it was meth because of the presumptive positive for an amphetamine and being in the urine. That So, I, you know, I think there's... I think he's allowed to opine on things, even though he's saying, I don't know exactly what kind of amphetamine class it was. I believe it's most likely to be methamphetamine. So I, he's allowed to say that. We can't argue, we can't disingen, we can't say something we know is not true, which is that the bag was tested, the bag like item was tested and it did not contain drugs if it wasn't tested by somebody to confirm or deny whether there was. So I would sustain that objection, and so we can't ask that question because I think it's misleading. So. I would, and I'm going to ask for the, uh, the, the, both of those questions regarding the PVC like material. All that be stricken because that's evidence that's not in this case. It's an expert report that was provided to us days before trial. They're not calling that witness. Well, I remember the question about about the baggie not testing for a substance. And the leading question. That. Yeah, the leading question was: It's not a bag at all. It's PVC. Was the gist? No, I, no, that's not. Well, we can just read it back. Let's just read it back. I'm cool. Read it back. back. That's not what I said. I said yeah, we back. don't know what it's it is. Gist. It's consistent with BBC. We don't know what it is. That's what I'm, I'm saying. not saying it's not a bag. I'm not saying it is. Nobody can. You are absolutely saying it's not a bag. Even you're asking questions like that. You know, I'm, I'm not. As much as I'm saying it's a bag, you're that you're saying it's not a bag. I'm, I'm not, not saying, saying it's not a bag. We don't, don't know. know. Then don't argue. I think it's unfair to argue that. I bet you. I bet you will. Or your partner. Well, I think that it's fair to say that um, it's baggy like. So I think the state can argue that we don't know. We don't know exactly what it is. It's described as, as baggy like. It, it's an exhibit, is it not? Is it going to be? Yeah, and that's another thing. They took four or five pictures of the eye. They yeah. complained there were only 18 pictures. Third of them was on the bag. Outside I mean, of the body after it was washed. Outside of the body after, after it was washed. Were taken until he told you that. So if I see there, it's right in the report I gave you. Yes, I do know. I, if the picture wasn't taken. Where was not in the body? Well, I would no pictures. What, what I would propose, hang on. What I would propose, I strike the last two questions and tell the jury to disregard those questions. And we get Dr. Lehman back. We continue on in the future. We don't make arguments that it didn't contain drugs because that's something that's not in evidence. It's not going to be put into evidence. And, and uh, then I, I, you can argue we don't know what it we, it's baggy like. We don't know what it is. It's baggy like. You can make that legitimate argument. But you said we can't say it didn't contain drugs. Then I, I'd ask that you tell the defense that not to argue that it did contain drugs. Wasn't tested. It's an inference. What's good for the goose? It's I mean, not good for the goose. What you can do is why why are they allowed to infer it did? Because we're not allowed to infer it did. did. Well, I would also ask your honor. Here is the exact language that comes from the medical report. Okay. The gastric mucosa is arranged in the usual rugal folds. The lumen contains 10 point milliliters of tan fluid in a single piece, a single piece of semi-lucent cellophane-like material, approximately 1.0 by 0.75 inch. That's the totality of the description of that plastic. Well, well, every can I finish a sentence yeah. anytime today? When you, when you say us, it's it's asking for a response. So don't, well, it's, I'm it's, saying that the reference to the bag-like material is in the summary in item one. Right. Torn, ruptured in parentheses, plastic bag-like object in the summary. That's a summary. That's not how it was described in the exam in the medical examiner's report. And that's fair. You can absolutely point that out. That's Thanks. absolutely fair to point out to Dr. Lane and that totally cool. that's not that I just don't want to and I get you're saying we don't know what was in the bag. If anything. If anything they're gonna say though, they're gonna argue it was a bag. They're gonna argue with inference. We know this mom said it was already testified, mom's already testified that he had meth uh, abuse issues. I don't know if there's going to be testimony about whether he was 
what, what happened in scans coming in. You've told me a little bit about that in pretrials that there might be, uh, when they ran into a scanner, there might show something. I don't know. I hate to hear that. Um, but I think there's enough that there's an inference. And then with what this doctor says, his opinion about excited girl, I think there's enough that they can make an argument that there's an inference that the bag contained methamphetamine. And you can follow that up and say, first of all, we don't know it was a bag because we, we're not sure. Bag like. And second of all, we don't know what was it. We agree. Yeah. We're not saying they can't argue against it. Right. We're just saying they can't get up there you and start saying there was a test done and there were no drugs in it. That's, that's, and that's, that's apples and oranges. I'm saying don't say that there was a test done because there was no affirmative test done on the bag to determine whether it contained drugs. Mm -hmm. So don't make that argument. But I think everything else is open to argument. And so I'm not limiting anybody. I just don't want to say something that is that we know isn't true. That is, the baggie was tested for drugs, and it didn't have it in there. And I guess you could make an argument. If we don't know if it's a baggie. We don't know what it is. So if you say it's PVC, we don't know what it is. Right? We don't know what it is. It's plastic. Now, we're, we're going to object to any testimony that that is PVC. Because we don't know. Well, no, we, 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 we went to a court. We got it. We were provided with two days before trial. I keep just hearing that, Your Honor. We got it when he got it. That's not that's true. true. Absolutely. That's not true. That report says Forrest Thompson asked us to look at this to determine what this bag is. It's that's absolutely, absolutely correct. Okay. And on top of that, we know that Dr. Mitchell received those items, including that report. No, Dr. Mitchell did not receive that report. It's in his materials from he, re he responds, he makes reference to notes from the BCI agent. That's what he's referring to. And the he never refers to this, not that I'm aware of. That's first of all, that's the autopsy report. But second of all, she absolutely he absolutely references the BCI report regarding polyvinyl chloride. Well, now you're just arguing that you got it. 100%. You got, it. You, got the medical, you got the expert report it's nine months ago. No, no, no. So you got it. No, no. So you did get it. You're saying now you're saying you got Mitchell's report right. with no explanation just to what it is. Well, it's not going to follow up. We did. We <laughs> called that guy and we called Davidson. Same old defense. Well, again, same old defense attorneys. Well, wait a minute. Well, why didn't you get it? So you're arguing. How else do I get it unless you give it to me? You're arguing. You had an Air Mitchell's report. You just said you did. You just admitted it. Air Mitchell's report. Just admitted it. Air Mitchell's report. I read what it says. And you tell me. I'm not throwing what you said, Jim. Well, you're telling me. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you you got it and you just admitted it on the record. We didn't have it. just admitted it. We didn't have it until that guy showed up. You just admitted it. You said it. He started it over. Let's put Leonard under oath and ask how this all went down. Well, I assume he'll probably. Under oath at some point, you're probably I, but it's going to be asked to admissible evidence. I think it's important enough as a discovery violation that we have testimony under oath because that man right there is going to say that he walked into this courtroom on the morning of the final pretrial, which was days before, and he handed an envelope with my name on it to this man, Mr. Thompson, and explained to him what it was, which were the contents of all of the reports that we never got and all of the narratives this man created that all had to do with the PBC bag testing that well, went on at BCI. Two separate lab reports and a narrative that we never had. And the only reason we became aware of it is a cryptic line in the Mitchell report that references a report that was done by some scientist apes that we put together to mean, well, maybe BCI did some more stuff with this. Probably not, because every pretrial we showed up to, we said we want all the BCI stuff and all the lab reports, and we're sure that we had it all. And I guarantee you, if Agent Leonard gets up on that witness stand, which will take about a minute, he's going to say that's exactly how it went. And the way the whole process got triggered is because I called him, and he called me back a day before the pretrial, two days before the pretrial, and just was honest with me about all the extra stuff that was done. He had no explanation as to how we wouldn't have it because he gave it all to the prosecutors in the matrix. When it happened in real time, which was two years before this case ever got indicted. And they used that material and sent it to Dr. Mitchell and it formed the basis, apparently, for some of the opinions that he gave. And so that's how this went. And for him to say, oh, you stepped on yourself and you actually had it all time. Come on. That's how it happened. Leonard knows it and Davidson knows it because they were both just honest and talking about how it happened. So, so you're about to argue, get back to your argument, you don't want them to say anything about PBC because Absolutely that not. was something that was done in a report you didn't get until the with that within the 21 days. Correct. And when we sat in your office in the continuation of the final pretrial, Mr. Thompson indicated, well, we're not using that anyways. There's no need. To, and, yet, and as soon as we talk about this bag, they can't wait to get up and start talking about it. 
All right, well, then the ruling is don't talk about baggy being tested for drugs if it wasn't. You don't talk about PVC tests if those weren't provided in discovery before 21 days before trial. And then that's just simple. I don't think we need to put anybody on and do any, any testimony. Just don't. That's fine. Don't don't bring I, don't see all, I don't see Agent Leonard sitting over there disagreeing with any of this. So I, I think we know what's up. All right. Well,